Hey, just a quick shout out to my few followers out there, my 15 followers I think I have now, something like that. I just wanted to do a quick video. Uh, I've had several people, some of my customers ask me about uh, a template, uh, you know, kind of an SEO template for creating a blog post uh, that you can use for uh, ranking on a specific targeted keyword or key phrase or something along those lines on Google. So I thought I'd just put this together uh, for you and uh, so that you can use it. And if you want this template, happy to share it with you. Uh, just pop me, send me an email and I'll get it, share it over with you. So uh, rather than using Word or something like that, I prefer to use Google Docs. I just find it to be easier, especially if you're like copying and pasting from uh, like Google Doc over to uh, WordPress or Shopify or something like that. It's a little bit cleaner than copying things from uh, Microsoft Word. Um, now, of course, you can use Word, um, but I like the shared environment so that you can have uh, the original author and the editor that can easily come in there and work on it and uh, create the slide. And it's obviously, it's super easy to create uh, folders for categorization and things along those lines. But um, in any case, I've got a quick blog template. I'm going to share my uh, screen here. So let's do a quick share and make sure we get the right one. All right. Okay, so here is the blog post template I have. So basically, I came over here. Um, I've got all my different directories for different things. Um, and I've got a blog post template that I've created here on my Google Drive, uh, basically created a Google Doc and created a brand new thing from uh, scratch. And that's what we've got here. So, um, you know, I work with a number of uh, content writers uh, for a number of different yeah. blogs. And so this is a, you know, the basic template of what I like to uh, have. And the first part of this is more operations uh, to uh, um, for the person who's going to be copying and pasting over to WordPress uh, so they can understand and use the different kind of metadata that is going to be needed for a blog post. So I walk you through this. So I'm just giving this, you know, this is just as the blog post template title on it. I can name this whatever I want to be. Usually I'm going to name this whatever the, uh, the title of the blog post uh, that you're going to be posting out there, um, just so that you can keep track of it easily. Um, I do give it also the, uh, this is just the, the template of it up here. I'm not, this is just you can either use the title of it here or down here. Doesn't really matter. What is its published date? And so this isn't today, of course. This is going to be the day that I want this to go out. Um, who is the author of this? So that, of course, they get the credit. The target keyword is, all right, you know, a keyword or key phrase. What is the, so if somebody searches on Google, um, usually a document, a blog post is capable of, of ranking for multiple words, but what is the main one that we're going after? Um, and so I will put that in here as a reminder to the myself, a reminder of, of what I'm trying to write to gear towards. So if I'm wanting to rank for uh, best dentist in Arkansas, that would be the keyword that I'm actually literally putting into this, okay? Page title, um, this is usually about 65 characters long, and this is what usually is going to show up in your Google search results. So if I search on best dentist in Tampa, where I live, okay? So I'll go past the ads here and all this kind of stuff. The page title, this is what's gonna show up as the page title, usually, not all the time, but usually Google, Google will do what they wanna do. But that's usually the page title, and that's what goes in here because it is part of the actual page. Uh, and so it's 65 characters long. It can be longer than that, but you really should keep it um, uh, to that long. And it should use your keyword. The keyword uh, really, 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 really needs to be in this page title. Um, it makes it a little bit harder, but um, uh, do your best, of course. Now, um, like in this case, they wanted to rank for top dentists um, in 2022. Um, and so that's what they titled it. That's what I searched for, best dentist in Tampa. And so it's given me top dentists. Um, and so think about trying to design a title that when, when it comes up here and shows in the search results, it is, you know, it kind of gives me an incentive. I, I, it makes me want to click on it. Oh yeah, top dentist, that's exactly what I'm looking for. 
Um, so you get the idea. Um, now, meta description, it does not impact your rankings in any way. It should use your key, uh, try and use your keyword, but it doesn't need, it doesn't have to. But this part here, this is the meta description. That's what shows up there. And if it's too long, this is where this little dot, dot, dot shows up. Okay, so try and get it within the uh, recommended length. Okay, and so you can think about um, what Google's going to do. It's going to bold uh, what you what I typed in. So there's there's best uh, best dentist. Uh, it thinks dental is the same. Uh, Tampa that was in the search, and so it's going to bold what it thinks, and so that's where it kind of you know, comes in handy. Um, but think about writing this copy again as an incentive for me trying to solve my problem. I'm going to look at the title first, and then I possibly might read the meta description on is this the right content that I want to click on to go view the page? Okay, so that's what these two things are really designed for. So, page title, Google is using that in its index. Meta description does it does not, but it shows these two in these search results, and that's what makes them so important. Okay, category um, categories usually like in like in WordPress. And if I want to organize all my different blog posts into different categories, um, that's what you use here, or you know if whatever platform you're using. Usually, it'll have a category of some kind, and it'll be like okay, www.site slash education slash page name. Um, that's usually how the URL goes. And so that's what I'm including here. And so that page name, that is what is the slug. Okay. So www slash education, my category, slash page name URL, that is the commonly referred to as a slug. Okay. Uh, now, uh, you kind of want to try and put your keyword in here. I, I wouldn't put the keyword in here, but you can put the keyword in here. But Google has said on many occasions that it doesn't matter. Um, I've seen uh, I've seen cases where that may not necessarily be true. And so uh, just by default, I like using it in here um, if you're capable of using it in there. Okay. A blog post always comes with a featured image um, or should. And so, yeah, you can go out there for whoever's pasting this in here. You can literally paste the image into this document and it can be scraped out of it. Um, or you can put like in the number like Shutterstock. I use in this case on Lightstock because this is for a particular customer. Um, whatever your, if you're using stock imagery, you can put it in here. If you don't have stock imagery, which is even better, um, go ahead and paste it in here and or put it into the Google Drive itself along with your posts. So I've, I've broken things out by guest posts and team posts. And you could put the image in here um, to help uh, so the person can download it when they are creating the blog post for you. All right, body. Uh, so this is the body of the copy. Okay, what everything? Yeah, you know, if I if I clicked on any of these, these this is the content on the page. Okay, and I just have this is just a header here. It doesn't mean anything. Okay, and I always stress and when you're creating body copy, always be sure to link to other pages on your site that are of course relevant. And so uh, always within the body copy here. I don't really link titles or anything along those lines. I, I link the actual text to something. So um, I don't do read more or read this or link here. You kind of want to link the actual thing that me is meaningful to them. So, um, so if I say, all right, capture the attention of the reader. Okay. And so I have a blog post about capturing attention of readers. Uh, that sounds silly, but that's what we're talking about here. And yeah, you know, I'm not going to be like every single other word linking to every you know, a million different pages on my site. But what happens is that Google is using this information to understand what is the what is what's called the anchor text that is linking to this other article um, that you have on your site about that. Uh, in order to help understand what the per why am I sending somebody over to that? And that's why read more is kind of useless when it comes to blog copy. Okay. Now you can link to other websites and things like that. Again, your, your goal is to help the reader of this page get what they need, solve their problem, whatever it may be. Okay. And that's why I, I always leave this kind of comment up here because it, it is important for SEO purposes on helping Google understand how your content is structured and what it's all about. 
Okay. So the very first thing that's coming in here that you're gonna put, a bit, the very first thing on the page is what's called an H1. Now, this is when somebody looks at your page, that main title on the blog post, what is it? Okay, that is called an H1 tag. And the way I do this in Google Docs is in this case, I am highlighting what I want to be the title and setting it to be H1. So that when it copies, when I copy this over to a blog post, it's actually probably going to, it's going to create the H1 tags for me. Okay. Um, people love structured, uh, structured blog posts. Okay. And so I'm going to do H1s, H2s. Uh, I rarely get down to an H3 and I never really never get beyond that. Um, but Google is actually looking at what is your H1. Uh, so that it helps uh, explain what the page is about. So be sure to put your keyword in your H1, okay, whatever it may be. Uh, and your H1 is really what captures the attention of the reader and helps them stay on the page. Um, so that because they're looking at, does this solve my problem? I searched for something because I have a problem. And I came here. And if the if, if I don't think that it's going to solve my problem real fast, then, I, and, then I'm going to be off to going back to Google and clicking on another link. And so we want to make sure that this, this, this title is uh, addressing their problem as well as the very first few sentences of the paragraph. Those are super, super key important on engaging the user because Google actually looks at did, did your page actually solve the problem? If it did, if it does, then it's going to give you a thumbs up in the rankings on Google. If it does not, which means that somebody came here, they clicked on your link, they came to this page, they went back to Google for the same search results and went to another page. If Google sees that happening a lot, it's going to say, oh, this page is not solving it for whatever the person searched for. I'm going to demote it for whatever that search is. Now, um, of course, that can be a good thing, bad thing for you. If It's a good thing by getting rid of uh, people searching for the wrong thing. But if they're, if they're searching for the right thing and coming to this page and they don't get their answer, they, they don't have their problem solved and they're bouncing away, that's a problem for you. Okay. We want people to be uh, sticking around and engaging with your content. Okay. I don't always need an H, the, a subtitle. So if this is the title, this would be considered a subtitle. Um, you can use it um, if, you, if you think it helps, uh, but you don't have to. Okay. And I always set that as an H2. Then we've got our content. And obviously you can make as much content as you want. Um, I usually recommend people adding in relevant photography or animations or pictures of some type to kind of break things up. Um, I like using uh, bullet lists, um, bolding different things, basically so people like either scanning through content and finding what they want further down the page real quick, or of course, then they're, they're the people who just love, love to read everything. Uh, but my goal is within the first title, and the first couple of sentences that I'm really capturing their attention that I can solve, this article is going to solve their problem. They're going to read more and click another link on the page or click a contact or fill out a form or whatever it may be. My goal is to solve their problem and get them to take the next action. Okay. Uh, and so I usually recommend, I, I personally like really good articles that are going to solve my problem so I don't have to go anywhere in ask another question um, or, or try and, you know, oh, there's not enough here. Um, I need enough in order to solve my problem. And so that could be in 500 words. It could be in 2000 words. Usually I'm going to creating pay posts that are bet like between 1500 and 2000 words. If it takes more, it takes more. If it takes less, it takes less. Um, but it's what solves the problem. The last thing that I usually kind of, I like to have that is not necessary is frequently asked questions. And so, you know, try and ask additional questions and, you know, put one or two paragraphs to it in order to help them solve. And so that's, I'm usually doing that at the end. Google likes FAQs. Um, again, you're, you know, I, I'm solving their core thing here. And if there's additional things that the content just isn't answering, I'll put this as an FAQ for people to just quickly go through and solve. And so, that is my template. Very simple, straightforward. Gets people, your, your whoever's copying this over to a uh, to your website, gets them everything that they need all in one place, so they don't have to go anywhere else. 
and it's making you think about SEO implications and how people are actually searching, why they search, and solving the actual problem. So that's it. That's the blog template uh, that uh, we use commonly around here uh, uh, for my customers and the people I work with. Hopefully this was helpful and uh, gives you some ideas on what you need to do going forward. All right. So that's it. Uh, if you want this template, happy to share it with you. Um, but obviously, as you can see, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. You just need to follow a few simple rules and uh, you will be successful in your writing. Thanks. Till next time. This is John Paul over at Click Laboratory. Um, feel free to obviously subscribe. Uh, if you've got a little subscribe over here, like on YouTube or something like that, um, or follow me on LinkedIn, um, we'll be creating lots of content like this. Till next time. Thanks.